Hey agents, it's Mission Commander Hannah here at Mission Conservation HQ inside of Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium located here in Springfield, Missouri. Welcome to this month's Aging Agent Briefing. Today we are talking about outdoor adventures with our special guests from Great Plains Nature Center. They have an awesome demonstration for you guys today on how to catch macro invertebrates. But before we, let, before we talk about that, let's talk about our topic and what even a macro invertebrate is. So this month, our topic is outdoor adventures, and this covers so many activities. From water skiing, to bird watching, to stargazing, the outdoors has a lot to offer. Even if you aren't a nature, nature enthusiast, there are still plenty of outdoor activities that you can do, like admiring a flower bed or even going on a picnic. The outdoors is for everyone. So why is it so important that we all go outside? Well, there are many reasons for this, one of them being the benefits the outdoors brings to you. So going outside improves your mental health and your physical health. The outside will improve your mood, it reduces your stress, helps you relax, and provides you with some clean air and some extra vitamin D. So why else is it important, important for us to go outside? Well, if you're anything like me, I love our planet and I love caring for it. I spend a ton of time outside and this has prompted me to want to care more for our planet. So spending time outside helps you create a connection with nature and develop a love for it. Through this connection and love, you will find the inspiration to help care for our planet and teach others how to do so. I have an import it's important to have a connection with nature and not just for yourself, but also for the planet. And there are many ways you can have outdoor adventures that also help Earth like nature walks, picking up trash, fishing, and even catching macroinvertebrates. So macroinvertebrates are some of the most important animals on our planet. They are very small, but just big enough that you can see them with your eyes. A lot of them like to live in places like streams and lakes and rivers, and there are a variety of macroinvertebrates like dragonfly larvae, crayfish, leeches, aquatic worms, and many others. So now, why do these animals matter? Well, for one, they are the foundation of the food chain by providing food for much bigger animals. The abundance of these small animals provide a lot of food and nutrition for the bigger animals that in turn feed even bigger animals. So for example, a fish will eat a dragonfly larva and then the fish will feed eagles or even bears. So without macroinvertebrates in the food chain, we would have no foundation. Second, these animals are indicator species. So indicator species are a critical part of any ecosystem around the world. Their job is to tell us whether a water ecosystem is healthy or polluted. So now these animals can't talk, so how do they do this? They tell us through their populations. Some of these macroinvertebrates cannot stand pollution and won't even be found in water sources that have even a small tiny amount of it. They are super sensitive to it and they can hurt them greatly. So when you're testing a river and looking for macroinvertebrates, if you don't find a population of sensitive creatures, then that's a great indicator that the stream is probably polluted. So after we figure out why the stream is polluted, it's a good idea to fix it so that these animals can live happy and healthy. Today we have a special agent all the way from the Great Plains Nature Center in Kansas. Her name is Emily Davis and she is here to talk about really cool and easy outdoor adventures that you could do actually right at home. So let's check it out. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Davis. I am the Director of Educational Programs at the Great Plains Nature Center in Wichita, Kansas. It's a really awesome place to visit if you've never been here before. Uh, we sit on about 260 acres of park called Chisholm Creek Park. Um, and it's got this wonderful creek going right through the middle of it called Chisholm Creek. It's the East Fork of Chisholm Creek. Um, so that's where we're at today. Uh, this is a completely free nature center that you can come visit. And the park is also free as well. So hopefully you guys will come and visit us. But today what we're going to be looking for are something called benthic macro invertebrates. And so for short, we like to call those guys BMI. Um, and all that means benthic macro invertebrates is that these are bottom dwelling creatures. So that's what the benthic stands for. Um, macro is something that you can see with the naked eye. So you don't need a magnifying glass or anything like that. And then invertebrate just means that you don't have a backbone. So we have backbones, all mammals have backbones, but these invertebrates are things like insects and worms and arachnids, all those kind of guys 
are invertebrates. So we are looking for these bottom dwelling bugs basically that live inside of the creek. And they're really, really cool creatures that I never thought that I would grow an appreciation for, but they're absolutely amazing creatures that tell us a lot about our water. So these benthic macroinvertebrates, these bugs that are underneath the water, they do lots of different things that are actually really, really important for our ecosystems and habitats. So one thing that they do is actually they are a lot of food for a lot of different kinds of animals. So fish, turtles, birds, um, other bugs even, snakes, uh, frogs, all of those guys love to eat these aquatic bugs that are living in the water. These bugs might be worms or leeches, they could be snails, they could be crayfish or crawfish, however you want to call them. Uh, they could also be baby damselflies, baby beetles, even baby mosquitoes. All of those guys actually live here in the water, um, just underneath all of these leaves and underneath all of the algae, whatever else is in here, they're just hanging out on the bottom in kind of the soil area and swimming around and having a great life. So they're a lot of food for different animals. But one thing that's really amazing about these benthic macroinvertebrates or BMI is that they can actually tell us about the quality of the water. Uh, so looking at this creek, you may make all of your own guesses about the health of this creek. Uh, maybe you think it's really unhealthy. Maybe you think it's a super healthy habitat. But if we just look at these little bugs that are living inside of the water, based on what species we find in here, that can automatically tell us what quality of water we have here, if it's really, really healthy or if it's really, really polluted, just by the bugs that we find in here, which I think is so absolutely amazing. So what we are going to do here in just a second um, is going to be sampling for some of these guys, because this is something that anyone is able to do. So some of the equipment that we will be using today are the waders, which you do not need these. You do not need any fancy equipment. You can do just rubber boots. Uh, you can even just go in here barefoot or in sandals. I a lot of times will wet wade just in the creek as well whenever I'm looking for stuff. Um, but today I am wearing waders. Another thing that's really helpful to have but not necessary is a net. This kind right here is called a D-net. So it's made specifically for looking for these guys because it has a mesh on the inside of it that's really, really fine, so you can even catch some of the little smallest bugs that might be in this creek. Uh, but you can use a normal little dip net that you might like buy at an aquarium store, or you can just use your hands, especially if you're in an area that has a lot of rocks on the bottom. You can just pick up those rocks or pick up leaves and see if there's anything living or eating on those guys as well. Um, so that's really all you need to just get started with this. Another helpful thing might be a key. So this isn't a key to unlock your house, but this is a key that helps you learn about uh, what these insects you're looking at are actually. So this tells us um, and helps us identify them so we know exactly what we're looking at. Um, and it also actually tells us uh, what kinds of water quality they can handle. So on some of these benthic macroinvertebrate keys, it's divided by what group they fall into. So Group one species cannot handle a lot of pollution whatsoever. They hate it. Group two species are moderately intolerant of pollution, so they can take a little bit, but not a lot. And then group three and sometimes group four, those guys can really handle as much pollution as you can throw at them. They don't really care. Um, so if we're in this creek and all we're finding is group three and four, we know that this is probably not a very good creek for these guys and that there's something really wrong with the water quality. But if we're finding group one and group two and group three, that means that this is a really healthy, diverse creek, which is awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and just do some sampling. Here's one thing I was able to find. There are a lot of these little, what we call mussels. Uh, they're kind of like clams, if you're more familiar with clams. This specific one is actually an Asian clam. Um, so they're about the size of your fingernail. Unfortunately, these are an invasive species. They're non-native. Um, like the name says, they're actually originally from Asia, but we do have a lot of native mussels here in Kansas as well. 
Some other really cool benthic macro invertebrates or BMI you can find are these water boatmen that have oar-like legs they zoom around with. Dragonfly larvae are huge out in the wild. And then of course crayfish or crawfish. There are so many amazing creatures that you can discover in the water. Not just the BMI, but there's lots of frogs and minnows and fish. The ducks love to hang out in the creeks too. Um, so I would encourage you guys all Go explore a local river or pond or stream, um, even a lake. Maybe you have one close to your house. Maybe you have one in a nearby park. But go get your feet wet. See what kind of things that you can explore. And if you would like to explore more than just our BMI, definitely check out our Agents of Discovery mission here at the Great Plains Nature Center. We have a new one that's called Discovered Kansas Animals. So you can learn a little bit more about invertebrates, but also all of the other amazing animals that we have here to explore in Kansas. We hope that you guys will come and visit us sometime here in Wichita, Kansas. And thanks so much for listening. Thank you so much, Emily Davis, for all that awesome information. Wow, those macro invertebrates were so cute. And it was super awesome to see how we could identify some of our own at home. So make sure you guys check out their mission to learn more about Kansas natives. So agents, it looks like our agent briefing is coming to an end, but before you start your monthly mission, make sure you check out our mission conservation website. So on this site, you can discover more about outdoor adventures and even check out our activity guide for the month. This month, this month, you're going to learn how to create animals using the cool things you can find outside, as well as create your own plant fossil. So thank you guys so much for joining us today, agents. I hope you have an amazing day and love the agent briefing today. Next month, we are going to talk about creepy creatures, so make sure you tune in for that. Now, until next time, make like an urban ill and roll out.